In this box is the new HP Omnibook Ultra 14, featuring AMD's Ryzen AI 9 HX 375 APU with baked in Radeon 890M graphics. This model is also optioned up to 32 gigs of RAM and is sporting an excellent touchscreen with solid color reproduction, which we'll discuss in more detail a bit later. But the first thing that stood out to me with this device was its build quality. When I first pulled it out of the box, I noticed immediately it's got this nice metal construction, actually recycled metal, if you're wondering. It's got a very large trackpad inside the device weighs roughly three and a half pounds. So for a 14 inch laptop, I mean, it's not super heavy, but it's not gonna be the lightest thing on planet earth either. Open her up and you'll be greeted with beefy keys and a decent spacing. There is a Windows Hello fingerprint reader off to the top right, by the way, baked into the power button with LED. I love how minimal the branding is in this device as well. I really like HP's rebrand. This isn't something I can say about all brands out there. But their logo looks very cool, very futuristic and minimalist, apart from the AMD Ryzen and Radeon stickers, of course, on the deck, you'll see a small Omnibook logo just below the keyboard along with HP's AI logo to the far left. There's also a tiny bit of Poly Studio branding along the left edge. And of course, we have the updated HP logo around the back. Omnibooks are a special line of HP Thin and Lights designed with portability and creativity in mind without compromising much in the way of performance. And that's quite the mountain to climb. Most laptops this thin tend to suffer either thermally or from a battery perspective, but much of what HP's been able to accomplish here is thanks to this Ryzen AI 3000 series processor. It's honestly incredible how far AMD's come in the laptop space with some of these chips. And as you'll see shortly, despite these not being marketed as gaming SKUs, they do a heck of a job in that department as well. And so we've partnered with both HP and AMD in this video to highlight many of the features the Omnibook Ultra 14 brings to the table. So back to the laptop at large then. This Omnibook Ultra features an incredible 14 inch 16 by 10 2.2K AMD FreeSync display. Now it is only 60 hertz, but again, these aren't necessarily being marketed as gaming laptops. In the creator category, I would personally much rather prioritize vibrant, accurate color reproduction. And in that regard, it's it's decent. It's not the best, nothing spectacular by any means, but it is certainly not poor. And the touchscreen functionality is the cherry on top. It's not everyone's cup of tea, I get it, sure, but there's nothing really stopping you from avoiding this feature outright. If you don't wanna to touch the screen at all, get your grimy fingerprints and oils and things all over it. You don't have to. It works perfectly fine as a non-touchscreen laptop as well. And with a versatile enough trackpad, you might not even be tempted to poke around the display. The taller than normal aspect is great for text consumption, coding, and things of that sort. It's even useful when viewing content filmed in more old school four by three aspects, since it consumes more vertical real estate. That said, typical 16 by nine isn't bad either. You'll see small black bars above and below video, but the contrast ratios of this display aren't terrible. In fact, even in pitch black scenarios, you won't find that they're too distracting. Now, it's not OLED, I'm not claiming that it is, but for an IPS screen, it'll get the job done. Something else to note, this display will only recline to roughly 45 degrees beyond upright. So this is not one of those models that will allow you to flip the screen all the way around. And a majority of this device's ventilation actually occurs underneath. You see this uh, very large mesh section here. And so it wouldn't make a ton of sense to flip a you know, panel all the way back around and essentially choke this section for airflow. It's prioritizing performance and I'm okay with that. So you can think of this as a more traditional laptop in that regard. Port selection is on the minimal side. I'll be blunt, you'll find only two USB type C's off to the right, one of which is actually on the diagonal section of the frame, interesting placement for sure. And off to the other side, you'll find a single type A port along with a unified microphone headphone jack. Strongly recommend keeping maybe a dongle handy or something like that for things like HDMI out, SD card reading, etc. The camera is probably the only other piece of hardware worth mentioning here. Again, this is a almost Almost dropped it right there on camera. That would have been disastrous. Uh, now this camera is actually fairly impressive, at least on paper. It's sporting a nine megapixel 1440p infrared sensor with AI baked in and a manual shutter, which I absolutely love. I've been doing this all day, just manually sliding the shutter to cover the lens. So it's a physical 
cover if you care about that sort of thing. I know my dad does. He keeps a piece of tape in front of his all the time, but uh, this would do the trick and it doesn't look as mm, archaic. And if you're curious, here's a short video clip for an idea of both visual and audio clarity from the microphones and the webcam. Hey, there we are. So this could be an idea of just how clear, how visually appealing the video is. This is apparently filmed in 1440p here. Of course, this is going to be laptop grade 1440p, so nothing uh, groundbreaking by any means, but this should serve well enough for conference calls and the like. Also curious how the audio sounds. Let me know in the comment section below if this is acceptable to you or if you'd need some sort of external microphone to make up for the difference. Now let's talk internals because this is where things get truly interesting. So the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX375, I know that's a mouthful, is packed with goodies, we straight up pack. This is an impressive APU. Falling under the code name Strix Point and based on both four and three nanometer processes, the 375 in particular sports 12 CPU cores with multi-threading for a total of 24 threads and a max boost clock of up to 5.1 gigahertz. Zen 5 radically improved AMD's branch prediction overhead with a healthy array of L3 cache. Supported memory and Infinity Fabric speeds have also improved with this generation as have the third generation AI engine based on XDNA2. So there's a baked in neural processing unit or NPU dedicated to parsing large amounts of data simultaneously with the help of artificial intelligence. Sure, sure, it's a pretty cliche buzzword, especially in tech at this point, but these NPUs have noticeable impacts on core throughput, freeing up pipelines during complex operations for other background tasks. The benefits, at least on paper, are faster response times for these complex workloads, as well as improved battery life since they're curated specifically for said tasks. It's a bit like a human versus a calculator for math. I mean, sure, the human can get the job done, maybe not me specifically, math was never my strongest subject, but the calculator often does it faster and more efficiently since it's designed specifically for complex math, whereas our brains really aren't. Jack of all trades, master of none, that sort of deal. And in an MPU's case, it is a heck of a lot better than a basic core at complex ops. So what does this mean for creators? Well, with nearly 50 T-Ops of dedicated AI processing power, the Omnibook Ultra 14 can manage significantly faster local generative tasks, large language models, and even AI assistance directly on the device. So a lot of what we consider AI today is handled server-side, off-site, some, you know, far away location, right? And it's being streamed over the net. And uh, well, that's still what's happening here. But with XDNA2 and this baked in NPU, more and more of these tasks can theoretically be handled locally with features like HP AI Companion and Microsoft Copilot Plus leading the way with quick feedback, data crunching, and more. Another thing you'll notice with Zen 5 architecture is just how snappy everything feels. Opening and closing applications, general browsing, and even content creation all seem to noticeably benefit from core level improvements across the board. HP includes a free one month trial of the Adobe Suite with the Omnibook Ultra 14. And in Premiere, you'll find that the HX375 easily crunches complex 4K projects. Timeline scrubbing is also noticeably better than previous Thin and Light revisions, thanks to heftier single and multi core performance and IPC gains, as demonstrated by Geekbench 6 runs. And this bleeds into gaming performance as well, something I really didn't expect with this machine, but I always like to try it. I just want to see how far I can push it in a worst case scenario. And on the CPU side, at least, the 375 plows through 1080p titles at high refresh rates, holding its own surprisingly well in games like GTA 5. And on the GPU side, Radeon 890 graphics ensure fluid experiences, again, within reason. No one's trying to shove 4K down this thing's throat. I do not recommend you do that. And with very few frame time spikes as well, which is important. That's Again, that's going to be a combination of CPU and GPU uh, overhead there, right? You, you don't want to have these really high frame time spikes which are essentially FPS dips because that interrupts the game. It makes it feel less fluid, less smooth. That's important, especially in first person shooters and racing games. Again, the combination is no gaming powerhouse per se. I wouldn't recommend pushing above 1080p, especially considering this display has like an elongated 1440p resolution. That said though, even if we saturated the resolution entirely in GTA 5, we still averaged over 100 FPS in the built-in benchmark. That is mighty impressive. And games that make great use of the touchscreen, I also want to mention this because it is something that touchscreen users get to enjoy here, uh, including MOBAs, board and card games, and 
more, play very nicely on this machine. I always find card games particularly playable on devices like this, and so I'm always sure to test at least one. And in cases where the GPU may not be particularly strong in relation to everything else, the frame rate isn't terribly important here. But that's one of the aspects of the HP Omnibook Ultra 14 that I find so fascinating. For the right price, Ryzen efficiency is really something else. And despite its lack of a truly beefy battery, low overhead tasks result in some of the best battery life I've ever seen in an AMD laptop. Couple that with its sheer genius during complex workloads with help from the magicians over at TSMC, and this machine is very, very likely to impress. Now sure, as with any mobile device, this will have its drawbacks. I do wish the battery was larger despite its impressive performance. I'd like to see an OLED option for this particular Omnibook someday, that would be nice. And I'd like to see additional ports, or at least I don't know, SD card reader, something beyond what we already have. But the potential for Ryzen AI and the HX375 is too great to ignore. It consistently beats comparable thin and lights in both single and multi-threaded workloads, all while prioritizing the next generation of neural processing apps and artificial intelligence. Like it or not, it's where things are headed. You will see AI in pretty much all important tech moving forward, I feel like, with very few exceptions. And personally, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. HP and AMD give us that with the Omnibook Ultra 14. They've stretched this chassis, honestly, about as far as it can go. I don't think you could fit a discrete GPU in here without seriously compromising in the way of thermals. This did not run very hot. It didn't run very loud, even while crunching that 4K Premiere timeline. I'm overall very impressed with this. One of the reasons why we agreed to partner with both HP and AMD to make this video. If this laptop sucked, this video wouldn't exist. And it certainly packs a punch in both creativity and somewhat surprisingly gaming workloads. If only they could somehow fit a powerful discrete graphics processor in here. I mean, that would just be, mm, Creme de la creme. There, there'd be no way you could beat a laptop like this. But again, I understand the constraints, the, the thermal limitations, especially. I think AMD have done an excellent job with the packaging that they have here from HP. And I'm excited to see what comes next. Now, if this sounds like something that interests you, we'll have this linked at the top of the video description. Be sure to check it out if you haven't already. I also want to stress the importance of due diligence in this video. And this is something that I'm very grateful that our partners are okay with us being transparent about because this is this is important. This is a lot of money, a thousand plus USD depending on the spec. This one is up to two terabytes, I believe. And I think that's what this exact model has, a two terabyte NVMe and up to 32 gigs of RAM. But of course you can scale down from there. So the importance of the specification you choose, you can find that via the link in the description, but also supplementing this video with other independent reviews, independent articles, so that you have a well-rounded view of not only this laptop, but many of its competitors. This would make for an excellent home office laptop, something you take on the go with you. College students, oh, th this would, this would have been awesome to have in college. In engineering school, I had a really thick, beefy, super not portable HP laptop. It was like a 17 inch chonker. It came with a literally a brick to charge as well. And uh, it, it just, yeah, it wasn't very ergonomic. It was powerful. I needed it to be powerful for some of the simulations and things I was running in school. But uh, heck, I mean, this thing is like three or four times as powerful as that. And it's three and a half pounds. It's incredible how far we've come in this space. And it's again, thanks to partners like AMD. They're creating silicon as efficient as what's in here that allows HP to pull off something like this. Again though, you have to do the research to know if this is the right laptop. You have a feeling, I have a feeling that it is. But uh, you know, everyone has a different use case. And that's again, why I'm stressing just doing the additional research. So if you're watching this far, that is greatly appreciated. Leave those comments down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Leave a thumbs up and uh, consider sticking around for the next one as well. That would be super cool of you. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.